Traveler, Paimon. Sign out! It's been so long since we last saw you! Welcome back to Sumeru City. I'm delighted to meet you again. So, what brings you back here? Oh, nothing in particular. Paimon just... saw a really big mushroom out on the road the other day and suddenly missed all our friends in Sumeru. <laughs> Funnily enough, we were reminiscing about you recently too. It was at a group dinner. I look forward to hearing about your travels. Something tells me we must have a lot to catch up on. Really? You were thinking of us too? What a coincidence! Indeed. Or as I call it, the beer yoni factor. Uh... <sighs> you really want me to say the rest? <laughs> okay. It's always rice to meet Stu again. Oh, darn, he said it. Hmm, you like that one, huh? You must if you remember it after all this time. Admit the truth. You have long been in awe of my razor-sharp wit. All right, all right, here's your 500 mora. <sighs> You're exaggerating. It's only 500 mora. All right. I'll treat you to some desserts later. Anyway, I'm actually investigating a case right now. My mind is focused on work, which is why I didn't complete the joke at first. A case? What happened? Nothing major. But after finding out who was involved, I decided on reflection to handle this one myself. Need any help? We only came here to hang out, so we've got the time. You may as well take us with you, and then when you're done, we can, uh, you know... Such enthusiasm. <laughs> Are you worried I'll forget about treating you to some sweets if you're not around to remind me? What? No! <laughs> Alright, was it really that obvious? Obvious enough. Still, it's a fine idea. You are the heroes of Sumeru. It makes perfect sense to work together. All right, follow me. You see him? The old man flailing around? Oh, is he the one you wanted to talk to about the case? Correct. His name is Cyrus, a former Spontamod sage. He taught both me and Lisa. Huh? Sino's teacher is in trouble? It's ridiculous. I'm just an old man who enjoys a spot of gardening, shopping, and wine. What sort of person targets an old retiree? <sighs> Professor, I've brought some friends. Ah, Sino. Now who do we have here? Hmm. Hold on, let me think. A flying fairy dressed in white? 
A youth who does not seem to hail from this land. My goodness. You must be the legendary Traveler and Paimon. I've heard all about what you've done for Sumeru. Wow! Looks like we're really famous! I've told him about you before. You are my friends, after all. That's right. Let me summarize the situation. A couple of days ago, Professor Cyrus suddenly received a threat letter. A threat letter? Exactly. Who sends a threat letter to an old man like me, for goodness sake? This is the letter in question. Cyrus, I have uncovered your secret. If you wish to prevent it from going public, leave 10 million mora at the back door of the cafe. Secondly, don't come looking for me. You'll never find me. But I will always be watching you and all of your secrets. Finally, if you dare to report this to the Matra, there will be consequences. Wow, they sure didn't mince their words. Clearly, this person must be desperate for Mora. Ten million Mora, what a joke. I'm just a single retiree with nothing to my name beyond the tomatoes in my garden. Where do people think I'm hiding ten million Mora, huh? And my tomatoes? There were no witnesses. So currently the letter is all we've got. So Traveler, Paimon, let's put our heads together. Paimon's ready too! Alright, take a look. Do you see anything suspicious? Hmm, very good. The paper has a rather rough texture. It's not the typical kind you see in most books. Another thing is, some of these strokes look kind of blurry. Could there be an issue with the ink? Possibly. And I bet the paper has something to do with it. Uh, most of the paper around here is much smoother than this, and the ink is absorbed quickly so it doesn't run. This paper, meanwhile, it's uh, very coarse-grained. Almost as if it's made from some sort of plant matter. It's certainly not the same paper as we use in the Academia. But the ink is nothing special. Just regular black ink that gets a blue tinge when applied to paper. Hmm, so do we think the culprit has a connection with the Academia or not? Wait, check this out! Looks like this part got wet at some point! Huh, agreed. The staining suggests it was a colored liquid not plain water. It also looks like it was wiped off with a damp cloth. A colored liquid, so... tea? Wine? Looks well, like we're thinking along similar lines. Let's go talk to Arof. There are some things I'll need him to take care of. Mahamatra Sino, Sir Cyrus, ah, and the Traveler and Paimon. It's been a while. As such, I'm inclined to believe that the culprit in this case is a student at the Academia. Somebody young and strapped for cash. Oh, one last thing. I'd start your investigation by taking a look at the cafes in the city. Culprit spilled their coffee on the ladder, huh? They do look like coffee stains to me. Also, if I'm not mistaken, the letter is written on a type of scented paper that has aromatics added during the manufacturing process. The kind often provided as writing material for customers in cafes and taverns. Ah, uh, of course! Yes, like they sell in the gift shops. I remember now. Zaha Hadi bought some a while back. She said she was going to use it as wrapping paper for a vase. 
Understood. I'll assemble a team to investigate the points of interest immediately. You have my gratitude. One last thing. Send some Matra to guard the entrances and exits of Sumeru City. And change into plain clothes. Don't let them see you coming. Will do. Great thinking, Zino. So, where do we think the culprit's at right now? Yeah, they've probably been lying low at home waiting to see how Cyrus reacts. Hmm. You're right, Paimon. Really? <gasps> Which part? The culprit's approach. Whatever happens, they need this Mora. But just because they warned Professor Cyrus not to go to the Matra, doesn't mean they know what he'll do next. So, like you said, they need to wait and see. And crucially, the culprit said they'd be watching the Professor's every move. Huh? Wait, are you saying... Found you! Ah, wh what are you doing? You wrote the threat letter! I... I don't know what you're talking about! What threat letter? I sensed someone was watching us from the shadows the moment we entered the house of Dana. You managed to stay relatively well hidden for someone reckless enough to threaten Professor Cyrus. There are a lot of people here, but we were looking specifically for Arov. Whoever followed us the whole way was likely to be the culprit. I... I was just listening in, that's all. You know something big's going down when Mahamatra Sino shows up, right? So I got a little curious. What's the big deal? You smiled when Arav left. I saw it as clear as day. Is smiling a crime now? There are coffee stains on the letter. You mixed some coffee with water, gently smeared it onto the paper, then wiped it off with a wet cloth. All to create the impression that the letter was written at a cafe. Closing off the exits to the city doesn't affect you, because you already live here. And as long as the Matra were focused on the cafes, you would be free from scrutiny. The cafe was a red herring all along. You had to be somewhere where you could monitor the professor's movements. You can't pin this on me! I haven't done anything! Really? Then why are you shaking like a leaf? The innocent have no reason to fear the Matra. But you... Your heart's racing, and your eyelids are twitching. You're a terrible liar. I, I would never... Don't try anything or you'll pay the price. Now come with me. Over quickly, Sino already caught the guy! You're telling me. One minute I go out for a quick smoke, the next minute I see Arav already on his way back to meet up with Sino. Ah, looked like a young guy, too. Couldn't have been much more than 30. But after what he's done, I'm afraid he's ruined his whole future. Everyone, it's all over. Gosh, that was so the culprit's name is Raka, a 16-year-old student in the Rataoist Darshan. Huh? 16? Cyrus thought he looked 30-something! We checked his records. He's 16, a third-year student. But he looks so old. Yeah, seriously! Ah, uh, foolish child. He's too young for the criminal life. What the devil drove him down this path? We question the culprit regarding his motives. He... um... Oh, just spit it out. Nothing can surprise me at this point. Very well. It's our understanding that Araka is a mediocre student who has been underperforming in his classes. He started taking extra tutoring to improve his grades, but developed a gambling habit around the same time and lost a lot of Mora. 
Down on his luck, he went to the tavern for a drink and overheard some people chatting about Sir Cyrus's comfortable retirement. They mentioned that he's always arguing about his tomato plants with some old woman on the street. Some old woman on the street? Goodness gracious, has that rascal attended a single one of his classes? That old woman is Kisharwar's very own professor, Zaha Hadi. How can he not know who Zaha Hadi is? Is this going somewhere? Oh, right, yes. Uh, uh, so another thing. We don't just argue about tomato plants. And what are they trying to insinuate by comfortable retirement? A man grows a few vegetables and suddenly he's living a life of luxury? Maybe it's more the fact that you have the time to grow vegetables in the first place. Araka mentioned he'd heard a rumor, alleging that Sir Cyrus illegally obtained a large sum of money from the desert before retiring and kept it for himself instead of reporting it to the academia. Araka believes this money to be the reason why Sir Cyrus hasn't kept up with any academic research or other projects since his retirement. And given your advanced age, he thought you'd be an easy target to blackmail. Oh, Araka. I'm at a loss for words. I'm so angry I don't know where to start. People make up rumors all the time. I am quite confident that Professor Cyrus has never embezzled a mora in his life. Arav, you'll have to find some excuse to interrogate Araka again later. I need you to deliver a few firm fistfuls to him on my behalf. I completely understand how you feel, Sir Cyrus, but I'm afraid that course of action goes against the Matra's principles. <sighs> Professor, there's no need to be childish about this. Oh, come on, I was clearly joking. Ah, uh, okay. Where does this go from here? The Academia will determine the appropriate disciplinary action against the student. And as for the individuals spreading rumors about the professor's obsession with tomatoes and some old woman on the street, there could be a slander case here. The Matra will continue to investigate. Who said I'm obsessed with some old woman on the street? Mind your wording or you'll start a whole new rumor. You seem confused. <laughs> Don't you understand? Uraka is just a young boy who made a very rash and very stupid decision based on some groundless rumor he heard. Besides, I didn't actually hand over any mora to him. The whole thing sounds a lot worse than it is. All it costs me is a little reputational damage. That's all. Please rest assured, Professor, that the Academia will issue a fair and reasonable punishment. Yes, I have no doubt about that. But as a former educator, I'd still like to have a serious conversation with the boy's parents. Their family lives in the city, yes? Correct. We looked into the family. Both parents are merchants, and they're often away on business. They've never taken much of an active role in their children's lives. Oh, what a mess. You don't have to seal the evidence away yet, do you? I'd like to have that letter back for the time being, if possible. I need something concrete for when I talk to the family tonight. We have to show them how serious this situation is. The relevant authorities have already reviewed the evidence and are now discussing Araka's punishment. You can hold on to the letter for now. Just make sure to return it within a couple of days. Oh, so you'll be able to close the case in two days. Give or take. Cases like this are quick to resolve. Very good. Well, thank you for all your help. Perhaps we can all go for a meal together. Oh, my treat, of course. My apologies, Sir Cyrus, but I have a prior commitment. Enjoy the meal, everyone. Ah, I see. Well, that's a pity. But, Sino, you have to come. You found the culprit at record speed, and I owe you for that. Ah, and isn't Tainari in town at the moment? Bring him along, too. Wait, you mean Tainari's in the city? He is. Tainari's master, Sir Nephis, called him and Kale to the Academia to help out on a project. They should be at Nephis's office at this hour. Though I must say, I'm surprised you're extending an invitation to Tainari. Did you do something to offend Sir Nephis? 
Don't be outrageous. Nefes offends me all the time. It's never the other way around. Anyway, hurry up and fetch Tainari. I'll head over to the tavern with the Traveler and Paimon. See you there. Uh, go on now. Don't keep us waiting. Not to brag, but we never had problems like this at Ratawa Hiss back when I was still teaching. And if you don't want to take my word for it, you can ask them. They were students at the time. They'll tell you what it was like, won't they? I was out in the forest at least four days a week back then, thanks to a colossal workload from Master. It wrought havoc on my poor tail, so I didn't exactly keep up to date with what was going on at the Academia. Most of what I know, I heard from Sino after the fact. Professor's become a lot more laid back in his retirement. He used to be far stricter, and was especially known for being extremely principled. Wow. It's hard enough to stay true to your principles as a normal person. I can't imagine doing that as a sage. It's a pity Kale wasn't around at the time. I would have happily taken her on as a student. And then we'd have one more person who has to address Lisa as upper-class woman. Really? Can't you just call her Lisa? She seems to prefer it when people treat her like an older sister. Oh, believe me. Back when she was a student, nothing made her happier than the younger students acknowledging her seniority. Whoa, more food? Are you sure about this? We don't want to take its bandage. Oh, don't worry about it. Order whatever you like. And if it's not enough, order some more. <laughs> After all your help today, treating you to dinner is the least I can do. I thought I heard some familiar voices. Ah, and Sir Cyrus is here as well. Oh, Kave, it's been a while. Zahahadi was talking about you last month. How have you been? I've been all right, thank you. You're looking very well, sir. I'm glad to see it. Have you eaten yet? Uh, care to join us? That's awfully kind of you, but I had a late lunch, so I'm not really hungry just yet. I'll have dinner a little bit later tonight. I just came to Lombard's to buy some wine, and when I heard some voices I recognized, I thought I'd come and say hello. So what's the occasion, anyway? Some sort of celebration? Uh, consolation, more like. You wouldn't believe the day I've had. Sounds like things have really gone downhill since I was there. Uh, my whole time as a student, I've never heard of anything remotely like that. I can't believe how young the guy is. Oh, what are his parents going to think? Oh, young people are always more susceptible to making rash and ill-advised decisions. Their minds are still developing. It's just an unfortunate fact of life. But still, this boy has some nerve. Just look at what he wrote. Oh, it makes my blood boil. Wow, yeah. Jeez. I will always be watching you and all of your secrets. And then he just followed you into the house of Dana? If this were my son, oh, he'd get the scolding of a lifetime. Oh. Luckily, I'm also an extremely principled person. 
coming! Your order's ready, sir! Uh, coming. I'll have to get going. Have a nice evening, everyone. I'll catch you all another time. Okay, bye-bye! Here I am. The coffee beans are in here, too. Yep, it's all there. I'll stop babbling away now. Let's eat before the food gets cold. Too. I'll have to walk home to burn some of it off. Thanks for dinner, Sir Cyrus. Master Tainari and I will bring you some homemade herbal tea next time. It'll do wonders for your sleep. Well, I look forward to that. In fact, uh, could I trouble you to bring a little extra for the other old folks on my street? I'll be the envy of the neighborhood. <laughs> no problem at all. I'll pack some up and bring it over. Ah, I'll see you all later. I better head home now and tend to the crops. Good night, Professor. Don't let those tomatoes keep you up too late. Hey, my tomatoes are serious business. I am not about to be beaten by Zaha Hadi. Anyway, I'll be leaving now. Don't stay up too late now, children. I bid you all a good night. Take care! Have a safe trip home! <sighs> All right. Now, we finally have some us time. What do you mean, us time? Well, I was talking with Tainari and Kale, and since we all have some free time, we thought we could all go camping together. Think of it as our way of welcoming you back to Sumeru. Camping? Oh, that sounds fun! Paimon's in! Right? It's been so long since we did something fun together. I can't wait. Everyone, let's meet tomorrow afternoon at the riverbank to the southeast of Gandarvaville. No need to bring anything. We've already packed everything for the trip. Just bring your delightful selves and prepare to have some fun. You got it! We'll be there! Great. Then we'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> Wow, 
You guys are ahead of the game. You set up the tents already. I'd say we're right about on schedule, actually. We were aiming to have them set up before you arrived. Traveler, Paimon, let's go fishing together. Whatever we catch, we can grill for dinner tonight. You got it! Dinner's on us tonight! <laughs> I hope I can contribute, too. The other Forest Watchers gave me some fishing tips a little while ago. I'm really looking forward to giving them a try. I saw some very appetizing mushrooms in the area, so I gathered a few for us. I'll leave them here along with some fresh fruit. Wow, camping with the Forest Watcher is the way to go! They think of everything! And even if they don't, they can improvise! This is true. I don't think I've ever had a single rough day in this forest. So, how has everything been going for you? Hmm, well, there's been some high points and low points, but we've had some unforgettable experiences along the way. I see. Oh, in that case, you should try a Valberry. I bought some from the market this morning. A valuable suggestion. Just don't bury your feelings using food. Uh, all I wanted was to recommend something bittersweet. Oh, I have a sudden craving for fruit tea. I'm gonna go fetch some stuff. Bye! She sure made a run for it. Unbelievable! She made a run for it! Hmm. So Kale chose the path of tactical retreat. Could it be she foresaw what shall soon come to pass? My dear friend, you know what I am about to say. <laughs> Excellent! A kindred spirit! A great warrior can sense when a duel is nigh. B but it looks like we'll get told off if we start playing now. Let's enjoy the nature for a while longer. I'll reel it in. Firewood, spices, snacks, and drinks. Everything's ready. Once Kale gets back, we can light up the fire and start grilling. There are three tents. Which one do you two want to take? Hmm... How about the one on the left? Well, Paimon just thinks the ambiance here is a little better. Hmm, true. But it's also the closest to the water. If there are any sleepwalking fungi around tonight, they might stumble into your tent. Hmm, well that's no good. Take my weapon. You can use it to bar the entrance. Anyone would think you were sealing the gates to King Deshret's mausoleum. Excellent. Then this tent will be an impenetrable fortress. I'm back! How's your appetites? Ready for the barbecue? Always!
Oh, it smells so good. Paimon's drooling. Someone sure is desperate to eat. Hmm. I think it's time to add the seasoning. How do you like your skewers? Well done? Medium? Rare? Wait, what? Isn't that just for steaks? Hey, if it works for steak, maybe it works for other things too. Medium well for me. Okay, these are about ready now then. It'll be a few more minutes for anyone who wants theirs well done. Oh, that was so delicious. If Paimon's stomach had space, she'd eat three more skewers. I ate a lot too. Oh, here comes the food coma. If you're tired, then go rest. You must be getting sleepy too, Paimon. Why don't you guys head to your tents? Sino and I will clean up. Tonight I show you mercy. Our sacred duel will take place another day. struggling to keep her eyes open. Oh, don't forget this. The staff of the Scarlet Sands. Uh, wait, you were actually being serious about that? It's a very powerful weapon. Try it. Paimon can't even lift that thing. Fair enough. You sure you don't want it? Yeah, Paimon's sure. We'll be fine. And even if we do get an uninvited guest in the night, Paimon will be here to take care of the Traveler. <laughs> that reminds me of a parting king of invocations. Uh, oh, I'll tell you about it tomorrow. But right now, it's time to rest. Sleep well and sweet dreams. I think they should all be here. Uh, Traveler? Paimon? Are you in there? Could you come outside for a sec? Look at this. What the? What's this sword doing here? Is it supposed to keep out intruders? Evidently. Uh, what? Who is it? Oh, what time do you call this? <gasps> Paimon's gonna take out the sword! Yeah! I'll hate them! Kave! What are you doing here? It's the middle of the night! Sorry to wake you up at this hour of the night, but we've got a situation on our hands. Let's get dressed and talk about it outside. Something has come up, and since it pertains to Cyrus and Sino, I deemed it essential to inform you all. Whoa, whoa, back up. Uh, let's start from the beginning. Huh? Where'd the wine cups go? I could have sworn I left them here after I washed them. Ah. There they are. I'll have a cup too. Can you see if the cookies are still on the table? They are, and so are the fruits. Hmm. No, oh, this is so planned. I should have gotten a few bottles of what Sino's group was drinking last night. Do tell. What were they drinking? Oh, right. I forgot to mention. 
So, I ran into Cyrus yesterday evening when I went to the tavern to pick up some things. He was hosting a dinner for Sino, Tainari, Kale, and the Traveler and Paimon. Anyway, they got a bottle of Lombard's new vintage for the table. At least, I think that's what it was. It looked pretty good. Hmm. Sounds like they're all tangled up in this. You know what it's about, right? Sixteen-year-old kid tried to extort Cyrus. He was asking for ten million mora. I heard some people talking about it on the streets, yes. Didn't take them long to catch the culprit. The sages are probably dealing with the case by now. <sighs> I wonder what Sir Nephis and the others will make of it. Oh, Cyrus showed me the extortion letter, too. It was crudely written, but the paper had this beautiful pattern on it that I've never seen before. Really caught my eye. Uh, give me a sec, I'll sketch it out for you. Okay, done. Take a look. You see what I mean? I don't think I've ever seen writing paper like this around before. God knows where the culprit got it from. Hmm. Interesting. These are all motifs associated with the tribes of the desert. What? Really? Take this, for instance. Looks like an outline of a spire, similar to the kind found on some ancient palaces. And the crisscrossing and mirroring here, I recognize that too. It bears a striking resemblance to an ancient emblem, one that hasn't been used in a very long time. Whose emblem is it? It's the emblem of the Temple of Silence. After discussing it with each other, we both agreed that something didn't feel right, so we went looking for you. This was a long way to come from the city. Alhatham figured you were probably with Tainari, so Gandarvaville was our first stop, but the Forest Watchers told us that you'd gone camping. Then, just as we were heading off to the campsite, we ran into Sino. He said he was on a supply run. We exchanged a few words, and then he ran off. Is everything okay? Give me a second. L let me get Kale. So you've never heard of the Temple of Silence? Hmm. <laughs> well, to put it simply, it's an organization that has existed in Sumeru for over a thousand years. These days, you can find a Temple of Silence office in the Academia, Theoretically, it's responsible for the custody and disposal of information and documents not fit for public dissemination. At least, that's what they tell the outside world. In truth, it's essentially a vestigial institution nowadays. There's an office with their name on it, but it's functionally obsolete. Historically speaking, the original Temple of Silence is said to have been established by Hermanubis, one of the seven pillars of King Deshret and the greatest of all sages. Most of the organization's members hailed from the desert. By contrast, none of the Academia Temple's current members are from the desert region, nor do they use any symbols connected with the desert folk. So the Temple of Silence at the Academia is just a fake? Wow. It's possible. The real question is, why? My guess is they're covering something up. So how do you know all this? Sounds like some pretty top-secret stuff. Did you forget? He did a stint as acting Grand Sage, and kept the pay raise even after he resigned. Oh, yeah! Paimon did totally forget about that. So you took the chance to read all the top-secret documents while you were acting Grand Sage, huh? If you're asking me whether I familiarized myself with the documentation in my office, I would respond that that's a perfectly normal part of any job. So much about this doesn't make sense. 
Why did the emblem of the Temple of Silence appear on a threat letter from an academia student to Cyrus? The student's only 16 and doesn't have any family ties to the desert. So where could he have seen that emblem or gotten the paper? You said you ran into Sino, yes? Did you tell him what you've just told us? Yep. He ran off as soon as he heard what we said. Given that Cyrus is involved, he's probably halfway through solving the case by now. Hmm. Still, we should try to catch up with him. At this hour of the night, Sino will probably go looking for Cyrus at his current residence. Hmm. If the Academia's Temple of Silence really does exist just to cover up the truth, the sudden appearance of this emblem can't be good. It's sure to stir up trouble. We should pay a visit to the Academia. Yes. As the Sage of Amorta, my master ought to know the truth about their office. You can ask him to tell you what he knows. The more information we have, the better prepared we'll be for whatever happens there. If this situation is connected to the real Temple of Silence, the emblem has to be part of a bigger conspiracy. Kale, could I trouble you to send a message to the core of 30? Tell them to keep an eye out for Sino and Cyrus. Traveler, Paimon, you two come with me. We'll go after Sino. Sounds like a plan. Let's go. Cyrus has been living in the city lately. He rented a place near the field so we can keep an eye on his tomato plants. Then let's go look for him there! <laughs> Here we are. This is the place. Huh, oh, we might be too late. Looks like nobody's home. Oh, Sino moves fast. If he was here, he's probably long gone by now. I know that voice. Is that Tainari I hear? Ah! Professor Zahahadi! Wow, so it really is you. My goodness, whatever is going on tonight? We're looking for Sino. So, he's already been here. Yes, not long ago, in fact. He knocked on my door and asked if I'd seen Cyrus today at all. I told him the old fool left early this morning, and I hadn't heard him come back. So we went to his place, and would you believe it? He's gone. Goodness knows where to. It must have alarmed Sino, because he took off in an awful hurry after that. He never did explain what this was all about. <sighs> How serious is it? Well, if Cyrus isn't at home... Oh, it sure doesn't sound good. Professor, did you hear that a student recently tried to extort Cyrus? Why, yes. When I left the house that day, I noticed he was watering his flowers in the field in complete silence. He had a piece of paper clutched in his hand, and he looked lost in thought. I could tell something was troubling him, but he wouldn't tell me what it was. If Sino hadn't happened to visit him that day, he'd probably still be holding on to that thing. After seeing the letter, Sino told him to contact the Corps of Thirty but Cyrus was very reluctant. He claimed it would only damage his reputation. Eventually, he relented, after much persuasion from Sino. Huh? Cyrus didn't want to report it? Well, that's strange. When we saw him, he seemed pretty okay with the idea of the kid getting his just desserts. As a former sage, it's possible Cyrus still has enemies at the Academia. That's why Sino was so insistent that he report the matter to the authorities. I was there while they were going back and forth over it. So Cyrus initially hoped to stop this from going public. But why? Oh dear, what on earth has that old fool gotten himself wrapped up in? Oh... I do hope he's not in danger. Oh, I almost forgot. Sino left me this letter to pass on to you. He wrote it when he came by earlier. He realized you might come looking for him. Thank you. What does it say? Let Paimon take a look! 
<laughs> My friends, this is a rather complicated state of affair. Unfortunately, I cannot disclose more than that. I ask you to understand and accept that I had to act alone at this stage. Don't come after me. <sighs> yep, that sounds like Sino. Thank you, Professor. Please do not worry. We will do all we can to protect both Sino and Cyrus. Traveler, Paimon, let's head to the Academia and regroup. You're here? I thought you were going after... Ah, I guess you lost their trail. We went to Cyrus's house. No one was there. Sino got there before us, but he was long gone by the time we arrived. He didn't say where he was going? No. He left us a letter and told us not to go after him. Can't say I'm surprised. <sighs> Typical Sino. Anyway, some updates on progress on our end. I drew the emblem from memory again, but in more detail this time. I checked some ancient texts for a similar design. The one I found was a little blurry, but the similarities in the general form and certain details were clear enough to confirm a match. Yeah, and we're lucky we found anything at all. It turns out the emblem was all but lost to history, we scoured the entire Academia collection, and that book was the only one with a record of the motif. Meanwhile, Arav managed to get Uraka to disclose his source. The one who told him about Cyrus's embezzled funds was a young man from the desert. According to Uraka, he had a striking presence and was well-educated. Apparently, the two met in the tavern over a game of cards. The guy claimed to be in the city for business as part of a merchant caravan. Uraka was intrigued when he heard what his new acquaintance had to say, and brought up the idea of extorting Cyrus for Mora. The guy encouraged him to go ahead with it, then handed him some pen and paper to write the letter. I see. So it could be that this person planted the paper intentionally. So, how do we find this guy? Did Uraka say where he is? He doesn't know. He claims not to have seen him since that day in the tavern. The man gave him some tips on how to carry out the extortion, but from then on, Uraka was acting alone. Nephis and Arov have gone to meet the Corps of Thirty and review the city's entry and exit records. Also, Nephis admitted that the Temple of Silence in the Academia is just a facade. The true Temple of Silence once came to the Rainforest to establish a collaboration with the Academia, but as time went by, the sages gradually became corrupt and foolish. The Temple of Silence felt that they could no longer trust the Academia, and ended the partnership. They retreated back to the desert about 400 years ago. Ever since its inception, the Temple of Silence has been the guardians of King Deshret's civilization and belief system. They traveled throughout Sumeru, sequestering and guarding any wisdom that posed a threat to the people's livelihoods. At its roots, it was a legitimate and reputable organization whose purpose was to guide people towards the right path. 
The academia of the day knew that the split would damage their reputation if it became a matter of public knowledge. And so, they set up a dummy organization of their own to conceal the truth. Not only that, but they managed to keep up the charade for hundreds of years! So how did Cyrus become acquainted with the true Temple of Silence if they left centuries ago? I'll bet that's the question that bothered Sino. Probably why he went after him in such a rush. Whoever is behind this, getting Uraka to extort Cyrus was only the first step of the plan. Their true goal in doing so was for Cyrus to see the emblem on the letter. He must have recognized it right away. That'll be why he didn't want to involve the authorities. He probably hoped to take care of the whole thing by himself. Unfortunately for him, Sino had other plans. Since the desert is where the Temple of Silence originated, that is in all likelihood where Cyrus went. I have to go after him. Really? Are you sure that's a good idea, with how you respond to the heat? Why don't we send someone else? I should be fine, as long as I bring plenty of water. Besides, I just can't shake this ominous feeling that if we don't catch up to them soon... <sighs> Everyone, I have news from the core of 30. Master! Oh, so that's Nafis, Tainari's master? Oh, we're finally getting to meet him in person! It's a pleasure to meet you, Traveler and Paimon. Several independent eyewitnesses have reported seeing Cyrus and Mahamatra Sino leaving the city at different times. Both were heading in the direction of Caravan Rebot. I was going to suggest that you join forces with the Corps of Thirty in this case, however, as I'm sure you've already heard from Al Haytham and Kaveh, the Temple of Silence is involved. The Academia has made a number of decisions throughout history that I am ashamed to talk about. It may well be that no better choice was available to them, but those actions are nonetheless a stain on our legacy. I won't attempt to make you understand the Academia's perspective. Now is the time for action. I understand where you're coming from, Master. But I'm afraid the situation might be more complicated than we thought. I think we need to keep a low profile, or at risk making things worse. Good point. If Cyrus is involved with the other side, or worse, if he's fallen into their hands, and... <sighs> Everyone, we have to get Cyrus and Sino back safely. We cannot afford to lose them. Need our help? Whatever you need, we got you covered. Really? Wonderful. You have my most sincere gratitude. Arav and I will continue to follow up on the lead from Uraka. Kave, Scribe Alhatham, I'd like to ask you to cover the duties of the House of Dana. Tainari, you are planning to go into the desert, correct? I am. Kave, I'll be okay. You stay behind to help Master and I'll hate them. Well, if you're sure... Okay. But be careful. Thank you all. Arav, let's go! You'd better get moving. Don't forget to ask for help when you need it. Will do. Let's go, Tainari! Hopefully we can catch up with Sino before it's too late! Knowing him, he's probably covered a fair distance already, but we still have a shot. Let's take it. Hey, we made it to Caravan Rebat. Where should we go next? Hmm, 
Maybe we should ask the nearby guards if they've seen anything. Hold on. Look over there. Is that Dia? Mm, you sure you want to brave the desert alone? I mean, it's your choice at the end of the day, but still. It's not my first time. I'll be fine. Sino. If you're really going to go through with this, then at least take our advice. When you're packing for your trip, budget for five days more than you plan to spend out there. Makes sense. Okay, I'll go get ready. Thought we might find you here. You're trying to retrace Cyrus's steps, aren't you? <sighs> Didn't I tell you not to come after me? I thought I had a good lead on you. Well, sorry, but we never agreed to that. Why would you go off on your own like this? Nothing personal. It's just a complex situation. And I'd rather not involve anyone else if I can help it. <laughs> Takes a special kind of person to get Sino chasing them all the way out to Caravan Rebot. But why so coy today, huh? You only gave us his age and description. Why can't you reveal his name? Is he Sumeru's most wanted or something? Oh, also, hey guys, it's been a while. Dia and Candace! So nice to see you. Actually, seeing all of our friends is the whole reason we're here. You're looking well. Glad to see it. Candace and I came to Caravan Rebot on business. We ran into Sayano as he was asking about some elderly gentleman's whereabouts. Some people say they saw him. <laughs> Guess he stood out as an older guy heading into the desert alone with just a sumpter beast in tow and very few supplies. That's gotta be one heck of a story there. Sino, it's okay if you can't tell us anything about the case. But let us know how we can support you. We're here to help however you need. The more people we have working on this, the quicker we'll be able to find the person you seek. No, it's not that simple. If I'm right, he'll be doing everything he can to avoid us. We spoke with Zaha Hadi. From what she said, it's pretty clear that he wants to try and solve this on his own. It won't be easy trying to find him in the desert when he's deliberately trying to cover his tracks. Sounds like this is far more complex than we imagined. Still, if he started from Caravan Rebot, the chances are that his route took him past Aru Village. He may as well ask if anyone there has seen him. <sighs> My thanks to you both. Once this is resolved, I will find a way to repay you. Ah, uh, come on. No need to get all serious. Just buy a round of drinks next time we're all in the city or something. <laughs> That's a deal. All right. So, you all set? Yes. We'll handle it from here. Um, thank you again for your help. I don't take it for granted. All right. Then we'll leave you to it. Just remember... If you change your mind and need some reinforcements, we'll be here. And don't think you'd be imposing. You can depend on us. Don't worry, we'll keep him out of trouble! Hold on. There's a few things I'd like to clear up. <sighs> Go on. So, after you left the campsite, we had a longer talk. Hmm. Clearly, we've only scratched the surface of the Temple of Silence question. It doesn't surprise me at all that the one in the Academia is a fake. Do you have any connection with the Temple of Silence? <sighs> I do. I trust you're all aware of the spirit that gives me my power. Herman Nubis, the original founder of the Temple of Silence. Due to my unique constitution, I was put through a number of trials in the desert when I was younger. Later, I met the professor, and he brought me to Sumeru City. But my memory of that time is hazy. I can't recall much. It's a good thing that Kave noticed the emblem on the letter. Without that, I don't know if we would have connected the dots 
and realized there was more to this case than mere extortion. I did not recognize that symbol at all. Whether that's because I've never seen it, or because my memory fails me, it's hard to say. Yeah, you're right. Thank goodness for Kave, and for all Haytham's diligence during his time as acting Grand Sage. But Cyrus must have recognized it right away, right? Otherwise, he wouldn't have had any qualms about you reporting it. Oh, maybe his connection to the Temple of Silence goes even deeper than yours. I suspect so, too. Professor has never once mentioned the Temple of Silence in conversation. And whenever the conversation turns to Hermanubis and the concept of spirit indwelling, he avoids going into any depth. Well, speaking of avoiding things, you do realize, don't you, now that we've caught up with you, you're stuck with us for the rest of the way. <sighs> I am aware. And I have accepted it. Or rather, I don't see how I could manage to ditch you en route, so I might as well accept that you're coming with me. That's right. Fact is, we're coming with you whether you like it or not, so the best option now is to try to look out for each other. Ha! Fair enough. Then at least let me buy you a drink once we're back in the city. Works for me. All right, off we go. Let's start by seeing what the guards here can tell us. Hello. Mahamatra Sino? I'm looking for someone. So I'd like to confirm any recent foot traffic in and out of Aru village. Hmm. A man matching that description passed by Aru village not too long ago. He stopped by to load up on food and water and feed his sumter beast, and then he was on his way. Where was he going? Let me think. He took a seat by the entrance of the village for a while, and had a brief chat with the person who came to deliver the water. He said he was headed... somewhere near an oasis, but he didn't mention which one. Do you have a map? I can mark out the direction he was heading in the best routes to any nearby oases. I have one. Mark away. Great. There you go. <laughs> Thank you so much. You were a great help. You've got a really good memory. Ah, you're quite welcome. Just doing my job. Best of luck. I hope you find him soon. Hold on. I see some people over there. Do you think it's safe to ask them what they know? Should be. I'll go... No. I'll do it. Huh? Why can't Sino go talk to them? What difference does it make? <sighs> Given my background, appearance, and the way I dress, I might not be the most welcome visitor here. Just in case, it's probably better to let a more neutral party handle things. Ah, hello there. I hope I'm not interrupting. My friend and I are looking for an elderly man who's gone missing around these parts. Any chance I could ask you a couple of questions? Oh. A missing person, huh? Sure, sure, sure. What do you want to know? I'm just wondering if you've seen him. Let me give you the details. So, 
A silver-haired guy in a long robe, culture type with thoughtful eyes, and he's traveling alone. He'd stand out like a sore thumb around here. Yeah, sounds like the kind of guy we'd remember if we saw him. He's looking behind me. Uh, uh-oh. That guy's looking our way. Your friend over there stands out a lot, too. Hey! Aren't you Sino, the General Mahamatra? Yes, that's me. You don't seem surprised that I recognized you. It wouldn't be the first time. Oh, you're the one looking for the old man who's gone missing, aren't you? I have a bad feeling about this guy. <sighs> <laughs> Someone's on edge. You don't trust me much, do you? No need to hide it. I understand why you're wary of us. Still, you came to us asking for help. Do you want it or not? I thought you were a group of merchants. Seems I was mistaken. Hmm. <laughs> Your henchmen don't look like much. But something tells me they put up a better fight than most mercenaries. Hey! Hear that, guys? You're my henchman now. Suits me. As long as I get paid for it. Just cut to the chase already. I'm running out of patience. <sighs> alright, alright, alright. Come with me. All of you. Don't you want to find your friend? Silver-haired, long-robed, culture type with thoughtful eyes? <laughs> Sounds like there's a whole other side to Cyrus I didn't know about. So you know where he is? Just follow me. I'll take you to him. Please, step back. Whoa! Something's coming out of the ground! What is this enormous building doing here? And how was it so well hidden? King Deshret's technology? Wait, so... Hold on, who are you guys really? Is this... the Temple of Silence? So you're a member? All? Good questions. There'll be plenty of time to address them later. This is not what Paimon was expecting to find in the desert, especially not hidden right next to an oasis. I'm not scared. They must have kidnapped Cyrus. Do, do you think this is the guy who Rocka met in the tavern? Hmm. What's wrong? Thinking about your professor? I just hope for your sake you haven't done anything you might regret. Well, me too. I hope I haven't done anything to incur your wrath.
All right, you can wait here for now. I'll inform our leader that you've arrived at the Temple of Silence. Sit tight until he comes to greet you. Uh, so he's just gonna leave us here unattended? Hmm. Maybe we're not being kidnapped after all. They can't have been at the Oasis by chance. They were waiting for us. Whoever the leader is here, they were obviously counting on us showing up. Huh. So this is the Temple of Silence. After leaving the rainforest, they hid themselves here? Hey, look! That guy's coming back! Don't worry. Someone will come and call for you soon. What's your name? <laughs> Sorry, guess I was so delighted to see you, I forgot to introduce myself. My name is Sethos. I'll be here if you need me, but I'm not planning on answering all of your questions. Other than that, you can occupy yourselves however you see fit. So we're free to explore by ourselves? Yep. I mean, I'm not worried about you running off. Cyrus is here. And unless I've misunderstood, you're all quite anxious to see him again. <laughs> He's right. Well, if we've got some time, we might as well take a look around. Have you got some time to chat? Sure. Although, I'm assuming by chat, you mean you have questions for me? <laughs> I don't blame you. Anyone else would. Not often. The Temple of Silence is a place of quiet and solitude. We don't get too many visitors. Yes, that was me. Although, tricked is a stretch. He was asking everyone in the tavern about ways to make some easy money. He insisted that nothing was off the table, even if it broke the law. So, I told him that Cyrus had embezzled a large sum of Mora from the desert. So you framed Cyrus for a crime that he did not commit? No, no, no. That's not entirely true. Let me jog your memory. The letter just said that he had uncovered Cyrus's secret. It didn't say what secret that was. Of course, Raka was a great accomplice, really. Very cooperative with a little bit of wine in him. Did exactly what he was told. And not much of an original thinker, though. It doesn't surprise me that he struggles academically. As soon as he received the letter, you'll have to ask him that one yourself. Certain things I can't answer for him. I'm neither judging nor defending him. All you need to know is that he recognized our emblem, and it was his own choice to take the bait. <laughs> what kind of question is that? He's the General Mahamatra. Everyone in Sumeru knows who he is. Right, but back at the Oasis, you can't have known who he was for sure. Or you wouldn't have asked him. So, what we're really asking is, have you never seen him in person before? I've lived in the desert my whole life. Guess you could say, I've never had the pleasure. Ugh, why does Paimon feel like this guy's not being straight with us? Come on, we've only just met. If I give you all the answers up front, you'll have nothing left to look forward to. Yes, that was me. Although, tricked is a stretch. He was asking everyone in the tavern about ways to make some easy money. He insisted that nothing was off the table, even if it broke the law. So, I told him that Cyrus had embezzled a large sum of Mora from the desert. So you framed Cyrus for a crime that he did not commit? No, no, no. That's not entirely true. Let me jog your memory. The letter just said that he had uncovered Cyrus's secret. It didn't say what secret that was. Of course, Raka was a great accomplice, really. Very cooperative with a little bit of wine in him. Did exactly what he was told. 
Not much of an original thinker, though. It doesn't surprise me that he struggles academically. Why did Cyrus leave for the desert as soon as he received the letter? You'll have to ask him that one yourself. Certain things I can't answer for him. I'm neither judging nor defending him. All you need to know is that he recognized our emblem, and it was his own choice to take the bait. <laughs> what kind of question is that? He's the General Mahamatra. Everyone in Sumeru knows who he is. Right, but back at the Oasis, you can't have known who he was for sure, or you wouldn't have asked him. So, what we're really asking is, have you never seen him in person before? I've lived in the desert my whole life. Guess you could say... I've never had the pleasure. Ugh, why does Paimon feel like this guy's not being straight with us? Come on, we've only just met. If I give you all the answers up front, you'll have nothing left to look forward to. Yes, that was me. Although, tricked is a stretch. He was asking everyone in the tavern about ways to make some easy money. He insisted that nothing was off the table, even if it broke the law. So, I told him that Cyrus had embezzled a large sum of Mora from the desert. So you framed Cyrus for a crime that he did not commit? No, no, no. That's not entirely true. Let me jog your memory. The letter just said that he had uncovered Cyrus's secret. It didn't... Of course. Raka was a great accomplice, really. Very cooperative with a little bit of wine in him. Did exactly what he was told. And not much of an original thinker, though. It doesn't surprise me that he struggles academically. Why did Cyrus leave for the desert as soon as he received the letter? You'll have to ask him that one yourself. Certain things I can't answer for him. I'm neither judging nor defending him. All you need to know is that he recognized our emblem. And it was his own choice to take the bait. Mm-hmm. never imagined that the true Temple of Silence would be hidden somewhere like this. We've passed through these parts before, but never noticed anything. That's King Deshret's technology for you, I guess. It borders on the miraculous. Amazing to think that it's been preserved intact all this time. We should be wary of our hosts. Still, at this point, we can be confident that the Professor is safe and sound. So that's something. Here he is. Grandfather, the person you wish to see is here. Well done, Sethos. Greetings one and all. I am Ba Moon, the current leader of the Temple of Silence. I know why you are here, and I thank you for your patience. Bring him out. Professor! Cyrus, are you okay? Watch what you're doing! Oh, my apologies. We have no intention of causing you distress. But you must understand, Cyrus is of great importance to us. We had to find a way to bring him back to us. Cyrus owes me his life. And to the Temple of Silence, he owes a debt of gratitude. I let him go a long time ago, but now, the time has come to demand payment. <sighs> I wanted to end my feud with this old bag of bones before you caught up with me, but you got here so quickly. So 
must leave, Sino. This is a matter between us two old men. You're all too young to get involved. So that's why you didn't want to report the letter. You'd made up your mind to come here from the beginning. You only left in such a hurry to try and throw us off your trail. Some things in life catch up with you. No matter what you do, you shouldn't have come. That alone brought the others. Sino didn't make us do anything. We came here for the same reason he did. To rescue you. We'd appreciate you telling us the truth. Otherwise, it seems a little unfair on everyone who had to stay behind. My secrets are secret for good reason. Bringing them to light can only lead to misfortune. You're afraid, aren't you? You can't bring yourself to speak of your past deeds to the students you nurtured as if they were your own children. You recognized our emblem because for many years you lived among us. Indeed, you all but became one of us. You knew as soon as you saw the letter that we, not Uraka, were the ones speaking to you. It threatened you only because you know what you did. Your own guilt convicted you. For you, Cyrus, are a traitor. You once shared your learning with us, and joined us in our mission to revive the might of Hermanubis, to bring new hope, new opportunity. But then you betrayed us. You bargained for your independence with your past contributions. And then you left, taking with you Hermanubis' might and the wielder of his power. We both know what I said to you that day. That as the leader, I grant you permission to leave. But that one day, the sands of time will catch up with you. And when that day comes, you must pay the price you owe. <laughs> you really know how to hold a grudge. Hermanubis' might? And the wielder of his power? Does he mean you? <sighs> Professor, anything to say? The moon is right. I came here once before. They rescued me from the brink of death once, many years ago in the desert. When he learned that I was a scholar, he invited me to come here and revive the might of Hermanubis together. Uh, it was a great, daring plan, and one shrouded in secrecy. The Temple of Silence had been bereft of Hermanubis for too long. The strength of its faith and its warriors were waning. The Moon proposed that we implant bar fragments, shards of Hermanubis, into the bodies of suitable vessels. If the experiment was successful, the spirit of Hermanubis would then dwell within the vessel. Uh, many believers volunteered themselves for the experiment. But we soon discovered that the bodies of grown adults could not withstand Hermanubis' power. In the end, Bamun offered his own adoptive grandson. The one other child was identified as a suitable vessel, and his parents agreed to release him into our custody in exchange for a small fortune. These two children were our only hope for hosting Hermanubis' power. <sighs> for many years, the Temple of Silence had been in possession of two Ba fragments from Hermanubis. As remnants of his raw power, they were exceedingly rare treasures. The test subjects were sent into a room that had been prepared for the ceremony, and instructed to approach the Ba fragments, whose power had been amplified. If, after some time, this power did not repel them, this would mean that they were suitable vessels. The original plan was for a three-stage experiment. Resonance, implantation, and recovery and observation. The resonance stage went quite smoothly for both candidates. As the second stage began, I realized a decision had to be made. Should we implant the fragments one at a time, 
This would allow us to monitor the results after the first round and adjust our plan accordingly. Or alternatively, we could implant each fragment in a different vessel at the same time and compare their effects. But as I was deliberating, both bar fragments suddenly became active. They glowed with a light we had never seen before. I knew that if they were not implanted right away, they would disintegrate and be gone from the world for good. Our two vessels had both displayed great promise by successfully resonating with the fragments. Under the circumstances, the thought of implanting both fragments into the same vessel seemed out of the question. To preserve our faith and our power, we implanted each of them with a single fragment. Ultimately, I ended the experiment and left, taking one of the children with me. In recognition of your past contributions, I chose not to send someone to hunt down and kill you both. Your lives were spared, but I have paid a great price for your betrayal ever since. I have always wanted to see you, Sino. Losing you and your Ba fragment dealt us a devastating blow. We've been in decline ever since you left. I see. So that's how I gained my power. Look, in essence I borrowed your bar fragment for a decade or so. And now you are seeking justice. If you want to take my life, then so be it. I'm an old man now anyway. But you cannot lift a finger against Sino. He is the General Mahamatra. Your actions would be seen as a declaration of war against the Academia. I'm sure you don't remember anymore, dear Sino, but you've met us all before. You were so young then, when we all gathered around and celebrated the revival of our Lord. You and he, Sethos, you were our final hope. <sighs> You'd like me to return my power? As a follower of Hermanubis, I have allowed this power to remain in the rainforest for far too long. Now, it is time to reclaim it. That power is not yours to reclaim. Sino was chosen by the gods. You cannot take what they have bestowed. You are wrong. Sino was chosen, but he was not the only one. My child, Sethos, has the same gift as he. So those are your terms for freeing the Professor? Despise me all you want. My sins are my own. The Temple of Silence is an innocent party. It is because of my foolishness all those years ago that the Temple's glory has waned. And now I must take responsibility for the decision I made back then. So what you're saying is... The power of one Ba fragment is not enough? You're asking me to return the one in my possession, so it can be implanted in him instead? Divine power causes great suffering to those who wield it. How do you know that Sethos would be able to withstand it? He is no longer a small child. But regardless, this burden is ours to bear, and your objections mean little given that you turned your back on us long ago. <sighs> Both my heart and mind are telling me that what you are proposing is a terrible idea. However... Don't listen to him, Sino. That power is no more yours to give than it is his to take. You have to understand. I know. But if this is a question of your freedom versus a fragment of power, then... There is nothing to debate. Sorry to interrupt, but in my view, there are a number of contentions here that still need addressing. Say that Sino refuses to return his power, and you also refuse to release Cyrus. Then, we are at an impasse. I find it hard to believe that you went to all this effort without planning for that possibility. You're trying to gauge where we stand while keeping your remaining cards close to your chest. Well... My stance is, put the rest of your cards on the table. Then we can have a discussion. Wait, those ears. So, 
We have a descendant of the Valuka Shuna in our midst. Splendid! <laughs> Fate smiles upon us after all. Everything we have longed for, Hermanubis will provide. Perhaps this very day we. <coughs> so much. He looks like he's in really bad shape. A moon! You... Take our leader back to his room. <coughs> Sethos... <coughs> you must... <coughs> Grandfather, I know what you wish to say. Leave this in my hands. I don't like to drag out conversations, so I'll just cut to the chase. Had Cyrus not stopped the experiment all those years ago, the plan would most likely have been a success. The wisdom of Hermanubis would have been ours. Still, it's no use talking about what ifs. We cannot change the past. I'm not like my grandfather. The Temple of Silence has a grand legacy and a sacred duty to fulfill. So it's somewhat inevitable for the leader to have an inflated sense of self. But I see things a little differently. I don't believe the temple has the same stature that it once did. Time has worn away at its prestige and changed things almost beyond recognition. So I'm not going to force your hand. You're all free to leave. Except for Cyrus. My grandfather gave him his chance once. And now I'm giving the rest of you yours. <laughs> you have courage and wise judgment, kid. Reminds me a lot of Bamoon in his younger years. I just... Oh, I truly wish that the temple would take an objective look at the academia of today. You've been to the city yourself. I'm sure you've seen that much has changed for the better, and things will only continue to improve. Why not consider cooperating with the Academia once more? If you hadn't betrayed my grandfather, I might well be open to persuasion. But it's a bit too late for that now, Cyrus. Hmm. <laughs> Tainari made a good point earlier. He said there has to be more to your plan than this, and I agree. All you and Ba Moon are after is the Ba Fragment. The Professor will accept whatever fate you deem fit for him out of a sense of guilt. I am the one who has a choice to make. And that's how it was always going to be. Ultimately, you want to trade the Ba Fragment for the Professor, correct? I'm glad to see you're giving it some serious consideration. I won't forsake my Professor. Nor do I intend to run from a problem that I must face sooner or later. <sighs> Give me one night to make my decision. That works. Then I'll be waiting to hear your verdict, Sino. Oh, my grandfather still has a fair few things he wants to say to Cyrus, so... I'll be escorting him back now. Are you sure about negotiating with him? I need to think this through. Everyone let's meet again later tonight. Until then, take some time for yourself. All right, well, don't put too much pressure on yourself, Sino. If you need any help working things out, just come and find us.
I've taken some time to reflect on this. If I had to guess, Professor Cyrus came to the desert knowing that he would almost certainly never return. He's a stubborn man who tends to double down when he feels strongly about something. We won't get anywhere trying to convince him to escape. I agree. My master Nephis says the same thing. Once Cyrus makes up his mind about something, he won't listen to reason. Mm-hmm. So that's one thing. A few other things come to mind, too. You've heard all you need to hear about the Temple of Silence. So on that, I don't have anything to add. My own memories of this place are hazy, though. Probably something to do with the overpowering presence of the Ba Fragments. Hmm. That might explain why I suffered from constant headaches and fevers as a child. I do remember having some fleeting moments of profound emotion when vague images would appear in my mind. But I don't recall much, only bits and pieces. I was still young then, and all I could understand was that there was a strong will inside my mind. <sighs> Thinking back on it now, I suppose it was Hermanubis's way of trying to encourage me, even if we couldn't communicate. The power that came to inhabit my spirit was probably one of the cornerstones of their whole faith. So if the will and might of Hermanubis is a real and tangible thing, and they are its rightful worshippers, then... You're not gonna give in to their demands, are you? Surely there has to be another way! No. I have no intention of returning it. I need this power to protect Sumeru. But the temple has the right to make the final decision over its fate, since it belongs to one of the seven pillars of King Deshret. So I will challenge them head on, and win the right to wield this power for myself, fair and square. Hmm. This reminds me of something Alhatham mentioned to me just before we left. He said that the Temple of Silence was originally founded by the ruling elite of the day. Traditionally, such organizations are bound by a strict and ancient code of nobility. Kave has made similar observations about the desert tribes from his work trips there. He says many of them have their own internal rules. They talk about the importance of never dishonoring their tribal bonds, or the rules laid down by their ancestors. I think we could turn that to our advantage. Go back to them with a proposal of our own. Wow, and just like that, we've turned the tables on them! Looks like we have the same idea. Turn it back on them now while we still can, in terms that they cannot refuse. That's how we win this. Great. And I know just how to start the conversation. Let's go find Sethos. We'll tell him that I know a thing or two about medicine and would like to take a look at his grandfather's condition. Sethos, let's talk. Have you made up your mind? We'll get to that, but first, I have some degree of medical training, so I was wondering if you might let me take a look at your grandfather? I have no objections, although we do have our own doctors here. I doubt you'll be able to tell us anything we don't already know. Hmm, only one way to find out. Follow me. Keep your voices down. We don't want to disturb him. Hmm. Let's talk outside. Bamoon has fallen into a deep coma, and 
his prognosis is quite grave. I'm sure that your physicians have come to the same conclusion. He appears to have sustained a serious injury in his youth, which has been exacerbated over the years by the heavy burden of work and now by the effects of old age. Regretfully, I must inform you that, based on what I've seen with patients in a similar condition, he doesn't have long left. A few days at most. Yeah. I've known for a long time. You're his heir, aren't you? You clearly have a lot of respect for the man. But you also see things differently. You have a broader range of concerns and a more pragmatic approach. So tell me how we can end this on your terms. Let's find a way to bring all this to a resolution while Bamun is still alive to see it. That's what really matters to you. I know it. Yeah, there's no time to waste here. You know that better than anyone. <sighs> You know, the two of you are actually in a very similar predicament right now. Both of you have a very different perspective from the men who raised you. Right. And you didn't create this situation. They did, but somehow you've ended up having to make the tough decisions. You're right. We both look at this problem very differently than the people we inherited it from. I accept, Sino. This all began because of Hermanubis. So let's end it with the rite he himself created. Legend has it that when Hermanubis first arrived in Tuletula, he sparred with the city's residents. He and his two companions proved their mettle by fighting over several days, winning the support of many fine people. That group of supporters were some of the first members of the Temple of Silence, and the sparring matches were enshrined as one of our founding rites. The rite of duels. That's where it all began. Sounds very fitting. I'm in. As a fellow vessel of Hermanubis, your ties to the Temple of Silence run deep. So I will permit you to participate in this rite, along with your chosen companions. Three against three. Sounds good. However, I have some additional terms. As the challengers, you must win all three of your fights to win. And Sino? Both of us must put our Ba fragment on the line. The winner takes them both. Letting Cyrus leave with one of the Ba fragments was a mistake, made by my grandfather out of pity. It is a long-standing issue that must be addressed for the Temple of Silence to move forward. I can make no concessions on that front. None needed. We're on the same page. If I win, the Temple of Silence must release Cyrus, and consider this past dispute resolved. If you win, I'll return my power to you. It's a deal. Then let's meet at the Ceremonial Hall tomorrow evening, 8 o'clock. Well, after how that went, there's definitely no turning back now. There never was. Turning back hasn't been an option for me since the moment the professor slipped away to return to the desert. You have to win. You need this power, both as General Mahamatra and for yourself. Yeah, that's right! Besides, it stayed with you ever since you were a small child. Surely that's a sign it thinks of you as its rightful owner. Both as General Mahamatra, and for myself. Yeah, when you put it that way, I've had to overcome a lot to tame this power and claim it for myself. Not everyone could have done that. Exactly! The Traveler and I will never lose. And neither shall I. The desert was home to an ancient and great civilization that for a variety of reasons, fell out with the civilization of the rainforest. It's just as Dia said. Prejudice has pushed people apart. But there must be personal factors at work here too. I can't shake the feeling that Bamun cares for many more things than he lets on. 
And I don't think that Sethos is any kind of villain. He's just doing what he thinks is best. <sighs> Tomorrow, everything will be resolved. gather on this day to perform once more the rite of duels with the greatest of all sages, Lord Herman Nubis is our witness, for his power and authority is present in our midst. This is our most sacred of ceremonies, and no disruption from the audience shall be tolerated. It is incumbent upon all to observe the duel with the utmost respect and reverence throughout the proceedings. Representing the Temple of Silence, the Defenders. Grandfather, you're here. <coughs> A right of duels after all these years. I am surprised by your decision, Sethos. I know what I'm doing, Grandfather. Just leave it to me. Representing the Academia, the Challengers. Ready. We will fight to have our voices heard. Warriors, take your positions and decide on the order of battle. We come not to debate what brings our challengers here, nor what will become of the defeated duelists. Duelists, the might of Hermann Nubis himself is at stake here. Now, fight. Fight until the rightful victor is proclaimed! Huh? Are you sure? I agree. He's very strong. Sending him out first will definitely intimidate the opposing side. Okay, then you're second. Sure. We have decided. So have we. Let's begin. Duelists of the first bout, please step forward. You better play nice with them or Paimon will make you regret it! A little bit too much chatter from the audience over there. Swift end to the first bout. I now invite the duelist of the second bout to please step forward. When you're both ready, you may begin. Let's begin. Watch out! Go, Kinari, go! He drank plenty of water before the bout, so he should be fine. <laughs> Can't see? Keep up. Let's nip that in the butt. One with the force. Yeah. 
Sir. <laughs> Can't see? Keep up. Time to pull some weeds. I'll uproot you! Keep up. Thus ends the second bout. We will now move to the third bout. Duelists, please step forward. I'm ready. So am I. This is the final stage of the rite. I remind you both that the terms you agreed upon in advance are binding. When you're both ready, you may begin! I am Sethos, vessel of Hermanubis, grandson of Bamun, the leader of the Temple of Silence. For many years, we have kept our covenant with Lord Hermanubis by guarding the secrets of King Deshred. And even in our darkest hour, when we could not see a way forward, we chose not to abandon hope but to embark on a brave new experiment so that we might prevail. We earnestly sought Lord Hermanubis' wisdom and power, longing to see his spirit and his light descend upon us. Now, I will fight to become the rightful wielder of that power. I am Sino, General Mahamatra of the Academia, student and successor of Cyrus, the Sage of Spontamon. I fight in defense of my power, my professor, and my nation. And you. I think you left some things unsaid. This is a sacred duel, and Hermanubis is watching. So bear your soul. <clears throat> Everyone, old and young, fit and frail, they're all waiting to see how this duel will end. My grandfather is a wise leader. He is also known to be a ruler who is not afraid to get blood on his hands. I understand his beliefs well, and I know what he expects of me, but our faith has held us back for too long. After I grew up, I went to the rainforest once, and I saw for myself the people of the city. Times have changed. The people of Sumeru are happier and more free now than in the past. I thought about this as I stood at one of the tallest points in the city, gazing down at the streets below. Then I thought of you, Sino. You and I both wield the same power, but the lives we lead cannot be more different. Each Ba fragment of Hermanubis stands for something different. Might. Glory. And one of many other secrets that have yet to be revealed. I once thought that the nature of our fragments must be what makes us so different from one another. But, maybe, it's that you've found your answer. And I am still searching for mine. I am more than just a warrior. I am my own person. Exactly. <sighs> the name Hermanubis has left its mark on both of us, shaped the course of our lives. We are his vessels, and yet we are more besides. So show me your answer, Sino. Show me I can be more than my faith, more than the power I wield. Show me the person I can become! Bring it on! Ah! <laughs> 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 
That's all you've got. What happened is searching for your answer. It's over. Do you yield? <sighs> you won. Well then, looks like you found your answer. I give his glory to you. <sighs> I've seen that light. That is the light of our Lord, the great Hermanubis. Priest over all other priests. His spirit dwells within that lightning, and his will lives on. Once a warrior of Tynar, he emerged from the barren desert sands to serve the god king Al Ahmar. After the death of the god king, Hermanubis gathered his followers and the Tynarian priests and led them to the city of Tule Tula. There, they founded the Temple of Silence. And from that day forth, we became stewards of all knowledge that survived from King Deshret's civilization. Barely a century passed before war ravaged the desert. One by one, Aramite leaders took up arms against each other in battles that would devour what little remained of their civilization. Only the wise city of Tule Tula was spared under the guiding hand of the Tynarians. But peace did not last. Coveting the knowledge of King Deshret, the beasts set their eyes on Tule Tula. The king of Gurabad laid siege to the city and ordered the sages to surrender to him the Temple of Silence as proof of his victory. The ruling elite colluded with their oppressors, betraying the temple so as to hold on to their rule over the city. They declared that the knowledge guarded by the temple was the true cause of corruption. These were dark days, and we faced enemies on all sides. Our Lord had long since exhausted his strength keeping the forbidden knowledge introduced by King Deshret at bay. To ensure the temple's continued survival, he broke his being into many pieces and began the ceremony of Hermanubis' legacy, bestowing his power upon his mortal followers. With this power, the temple was able to defeat the tyrant's army. Yet, we were not hailed as heroes. Strange and unfamiliar as this power was, it struck fear into the people's hearts and drove them to reject us. 
In the end, the people of the Temple and the Tule Tula Tainarians left the city for good and made their way to the rainforest. What followed next was inevitable. The elite of Tule Tula fell and were decimated. War engulfed the desert. And we wandered from place to place, always in hiding, all the while keeping close watch over our secrets and staying true to our mission. Betrayal forced us out of the desert and into the forest. Then mistrust drove us from the forest into the desert once more. We have lived in exile for far, far too long. Yet, today, the Temple of Silence has borne witness to the glory of Hermanubis once more. Thank you. Father. Hey, Sethos. You'll get through this. I know. I just... I'll miss him. I guess you were prepared for this. It's been a long time coming, huh? Yeah, uh, he's been on death's door for a very long time now. I think it was only through sheer willpower that he managed to hold on at this point. At least, he was able to see this chapter come to a close before he passed. What's next for you? Per my grandfather's last wishes, the Temple of Silence should submit to whoever possesses the largest number of Hermanupus fragments. That entitles you to be our new leader, Sino. <sighs> but that's never going to work, as I'm sure you realize. I'm the General Mahamatra. I am needed back at the Academia. I did foresee this possibility, and I gave it some thought. The fact is, I know next to nothing about the staff, records, and environment here. As such... I am ill-suited to be your leader, Sethos. I believe the honor should go to you. Were it not for this duel, or indeed if you had other intentions, the Ba fragments would most likely be in your hands by now. I'm sure Ba Moon never meant for anyone but you to be his successor. <laughs> you really think so? I do. Still... I didn't think Bamoon looked very surprised by the final result. Perhaps he had an inkling that this would be the way things end. Well, in any case, since the Ba fragments are with me now, I guess I can call the shots. Sethos, I would like you to succeed Bamoon as the new leader of the Temple of Silence. You are more suited to the role than I, and I have complete faith that you will be an excellent leader. Just think of it as doing me a favor. Uh, but doesn't that render everything that we've been through up to now meaningless? <laughs> no, it doesn't. This experience has allowed us to become friends, which means that the Academia and the Temple of Silence will become partners once more. That's a much bigger deal than you might think, Sethos. You said yourself, times have changed. 
You have to believe that things can change for the better here at the temple too. I will try. To be honest, I couldn't have asked for a better outcome. Actually, part of me wonders whether Ba Moon's intentions from the very beginning was just to create enough pressure to force us towards a duel. That way, no matter who won, one of us would have to surrender our Ba Fragment, and the power of Herm Anubis would be concentrated in one single person. Had you won, the Temple of Silence would have doubled its strength. And were I to win, he correctly anticipated that I wouldn't suddenly drop everything to become the leader of the Temple, much less integrate the Temple into the Academia by force. He knew that the Temple's future would depend not just on the guidance of Herm Anubis, but the support of the Academia too. So he made it his responsibility to ensure his successor would be free from the burdens of the past. His plan meant that whoever ended up succeeding him, they would have an easier time interacting with the Academia. <laughs> with one single letter, he lured out the Professor. No matter what happened after that, it would result in a net benefit to the Temple. And here I thought the General Mahamatra wouldn't care for all these trivial details. You're absolutely right. Grandfather and I considered this from every angle. We had to find a way to mend our relationship with the Academia. In that sense, the right of duels was just a means to an end. Thank you for everything, Sino. As a gesture of our gratitude, to those that you and Lesser Lord Kusanali deem worthy, I will grant the honor of access to the Temple of Silence for their pursuit of knowledge. The Temple of Silence has a wealth of information on King Deshret's civilization, more than any other organization in existence today. In times when you need information that only we can provide, we will be here to support you. But you must be exceedingly careful with your selection of candidates, lest you lead humanity to repeat the same mistakes. By the way, Tainari, my grandfather was so happy to see you. You are a descendant of the Veluka Shuna, and we are the heirs to the will of Hermanubis. The story goes that King Deshra chose the sage Hermanubis from among the Tainarians and appointed him as his familiar. He went on to fight many valiant battles with his Tainarian companions. They always stood by each other, from the founding of the Temple of Silence to the fall of Tuleitula. The Tainarians who left Tuleitula joined their human counterparts in the rainforest. A few centuries later, when some of the group returned to the desert, Many of the Tainarians chose to stay and put down roots in the rainforest. In all likelihood, those were your ancestors. How fascinating. My father once mentioned that I was named after the Tainarians, but I never knew that my forebearers had such a history with the Temple of Silence. I like this story. Ah, uh, by the way, has anyone seen Cyrus? Ah, uh, yes. Cyrus. You'll probably find him in my grandfather's room. He wouldn't show it in front of me, but I think he still has many fond memories of my grandfather. If it's true that you and your grandfather really planned for everything to turn out this way, then I guess he didn't really resent Cyrus as much as he appeared to. <laughs> Who knows? Perhaps all of us. You, me, and Cyrus. We're all just pawns in my grandfather's plan to set things straight. He was awful like that. Someone's got to make the decisions when history is at a crossroads. I will make a detailed report on all of this to Lesser Lord Kusanali, and arrange for an official delegation from the Academia to come and meet you in the desert. I'm sure you'll have lots to attend to in the days ahead. But once things return to normal, please come and visit the rainforest again. You should stay for a few days this time, and start to build some relationships. If we're going to work together, both sides have to get to know one another better. I will. All right, well, bye for now, everyone. I'll be seeing you. See you soon. Come hang out with us anytime.
What were you thinking gallivanting off into the desert alone at your age? What if you kicked the bucket, hmm? You told not a soul what you were up to, designated nobody to handle your affairs, and left everyone scrambling frantically to try and figure out how on earth to clean up the colossal mess you'd made. Oh, please, will you stop your yelling? What other choice did I have? What do you mean, what other choice? Do you mean to tell me that after all your years of learning, and sagehood no less, the only idea you could conjure up in that white-haired walnut of yours was to shoot off into the unknown like some hot-headed 20-year-old adventurer? A one-man suicide mission, hmm? That's the best idea that one of the finest minds of a generation could come up with, is it? It astounds me that you survived the journey, and you're lucky that Ba Moon didn't finish you off when you arrived. All right, all right. Honestly, the way you're going off on me, it's like you wish you'd been there to lend him a hand. Does it mean nothing to you that I'm your colleague and former classmate? <sighs> I've got nothing more to say. What's the point of berating an old bag of bones? What do you mean, bag of bones? I'm a flesh and blood hero who, despite his old age, saved our General Mahamatra from being stripped of his powers. Okay, look. Fine, I admit it, I was in the wrong. How can I make it up to you? What about, uh, a month's work at the Academia? <laughs> One month? Try three. Hainari's master is really laying into Cyrus. Um, let's give them a wide berth. <sighs> Professor bought this on himself. Don't pay any attention to him. Uh, wow, I haven't seen Master get this riled up in a long time. The last time he chewed someone out like this must have been back when I was still a student. I think I'll go around and update everyone, tell them the situation's resolved. Want to come with me? We can go for dinner afterwards. My treat. You in? Makes sense. I'm in. Hey, Kale. Ah, you're back! <laughs> well, look who we have here. Would you mind explaining to me what has been going on this past few days? I heard you all ran off into the desert and got embroiled in a major catastrophe. All taken care of. That does not answer my question. How could you be so careless? That goes for you as well. Yes, and you too! When you run into problems, you really ought to ask for help, you know? I've been around the block. Don't you think it would have made sense to involve me? And let's not forget, I know the desert like the back of my hand. Now would not be a good time to attempt to argue with Farazan. You're right. Mm-hmm. It's not the first time that I've had to talk to you about this sort of thing either. You need to learn that there are times when the right thing to do is get a more experienced member of staff involved. Do I make myself clear? Because if you don't, I... Kale, please do something. He's giving me the signal. All right, guess it's time to play my ace in the hole. Um, say, Madam Farizan, I can see you're pretty upset, but, uh, I was just wondering. Remember that time you offered to give me a tour of the academia? Does that offer still stand? Huh? Uh, wait, did I hear that right? Kale, you remember? Wonderful. Well, of course the offer still stands. Come on. Madame Farozan will show you around the old classrooms. Poor Kale getting dragged off like that. Also, check out Farozan acting like some sort of official academia tour guide. <clears throat> Kale, cup. Huh? What? <laughs> right! Hmm? What do you mean, cup? You need a cup. I can get you a cup. Oh, it's nothing. Just Master's way of reminding me to stay hydrated while I'm out and about. <laughs> it's code for, let's reconvene at the cafe. 
Tainari and I used it while we were in school, and it's become something of a family tradition now. Oh, that's kind of fun. Mm-hmm. Two people left. Let's bring them along, too. Am I hallucinating? Or do I see Kave and Alhatham engaged in... diligent studying? We're just reorganizing all the books we used. Look, there's a whole mountain of them. There's no rush. Nobody reads these books anyway. My sincere thanks to you both. Yes, with your help, we resolved the issue rather swiftly and painlessly. And the outcome was better than we could have hoped for. I see. The Temple of Silence resorted to rather unique means of self-preservation. It explains how they managed to remain hidden for so many years. And it sounds like they managed to preserve a whole load of ancient documents as well. I'd love to go check those out if I ever had the chance. That day will come. The Temple of Silence is a hugely important organization, and we'll be sure to maintain good relations with them in the future. Now, as a token of my appreciation, I'd like to treat everyone to coffee. <laughs> sounds good. Yeah, sounds great. Um, although after the last few days, I don't know if I can handle another coffee, but I can just order something else. Sure, let's go. worrying about you guys. <laughs> a truly edifying account of the events. Bereft of detail, but it has livened up the room all the same. Hey, Paimon included all the juicy details. The Traveler just pounced and then waved their sword like this, then spun around and blocked. Despite winning three bouts in a row, you still ceded the position of leader to him. That's very dignified of you, Sino. Of course. Being dignified comes with being a true champion. I got to be a champion, too, for once. I've not sparred much with desert folk before. It was a pretty unique experience. Yeah! Huge place! It felt like something right out of an epic poem! Imagine this. It was like there was... Maybe save that one for later, Paimon. Dessert's here. I think that'll do me for today. Shall we stop off at the House of Dana again before heading home? 
We should probably finish putting all those books back. My thoughts exactly. See you around. I should get going as well. See you all later. Make sure you get some good rest tonight. I need to go say thanks to the Core 30 for their help. Also, Sir Nephis says he wanted to introduce me to some of the Academia's work processes. So, I gotta dash to. Kali's come a long way. She's much more confident at dealing with other people these days. Everyone's a work in progress. You never stop learning. Yeah, true. Good. It feels like everything's finally wrapped up now. Life is all about these moments when you can finally relax and hang out with good friends after a job well done. And also, those desserts Sino got, they were really good. Paimon definitely needs more of those in the future. Do you three have anything planned for the rest of the day? If not... Would you come somewhere with me? That's a secret for now. Wouldn't want to spoil the surprise. Okay. I think I can guess what you're talking about. It'll definitely be a nice surprise. Well, now Paimon's curious! Come on, let's go! Been a while since I last made my way up here. Wow, oh, look at this place! We're so high up! Need any help? <laughs> As you wish. That's a nice spot, isn't it? What a great view! We're so high up, we can see for miles! Traveler. Turn around. This is my secret base. Somewhere I only bring my best friends. <laughs> when I was a student, I used to slip away and climb up here all the time, just to clear my head. I was quite young then, and hadn't made too many friends yet. Back then, I had a lot of the same questions that Sethos was asking. Who am I? Why do I have this power? And what should I be fighting for? Our gifts help us to find a rightful place in the world. That was my experience. Yeah. <laughs> you two really are like brothers. I feel the same way. <laughs> of course. I see no need to be humble when it comes to the facts. I still remember one time when we came up here to chat and do our homework. Sino accidentally dropped a fruit. Luckily, he has fast reflexes, so he caught it just in time. That was the one and only time. Nothing will ever slip through my fingers again. <sighs> Those were good times. I kind of miss the student life. You know, Paimon really shouldn't be able to imagine Sino doing something like that, but for some strange reason, the mental image is coming through clear as day. Then make it stop. Hmm. There's somebody there. Uh, it's Professor Cyrus. You guys carry on without me. I'll be right back. Okay. Huh? Hey, you're not supposed to jump down! Be careful! My days. I can't believe how stupid I look in this one. <sighs> Professor, what are you muttering to yourself about? Sino, 
<laughs> Just the man I'm looking for. Guess what I found in some old notebooks. <sighs> some old photos? Can you believe it? This notebook was just sitting in a pile of odds and ends in the sage's office. I must have forgotten to take it with me, and no one's touched it since. It was still right there. I was at the Academia earlier to discuss my workload with Nephis. I swung by the old office to have a look around and just happened to cross it. Well, time flies. Look how tiny you are in this picture. Still a kid! You look quite young yourself in that one. Ah, it's this one. I remember that. Lisa took it, didn't she? Yep. Looks like her work, all right. <laughs> Who else could have found just the right angle to make me look so unbelievably hideous? And this one. Looks like we're both dozing off. <laughs> Cheeky girl. Taking secret photos of us without our knowledge. Is there something you'd like to say to me, Professor? Like what? Like, these are good photos, aren't they? <sighs> hey, at moments like this, I... I hardly know where to begin. I can't pretend I'm a good person. But Moon had every reason to despise me. And well, so do you, if you feel the same way. <laughs> Don't be ridiculous, you old codger. Ugh. <sighs> Is that not what you wanted me to say? Oh, I've dreamt of that place many times after leaving the desert. Sometimes I've dreamed that I was doing research with them again. And other times, I dream of the day they saved my life. Oh, it was one of the happiest times of my life. We all learned so much from one another. You've matured so much over the years, I know. Since you're my professor, I should save you some face by not calling you out on all the non-answers you just gave. So, I will do the right thing and keep my mouth shut. Hmm. <laughs> Good thinking. Take your own advice next time. Seriously, why bully an old man like me? I thought heroes were supposed to be gracious. Hey, wait, uh, How did I not notice this one earlier? Lisa strikes again. Just how many did she take? Look how cute you were when you were little. <laughs> I remember how well-mannered you were back then, too. Yeah, and look how serious and professional you used to be. Oh, I can't compete with you anymore. First you get better than me at the deadpan jokes, and now you're besting me at those little quips, too. Don't say that. I still have a lot of respect for you. <laughs> That's more like it. Hey, what would you say to meeting up with Lisa again sometime? <laughs> I'd like that. Let's find a time and pay her a visit in Mondstadt. All right, I'll add it to my schedule. Let's go next week. Wait, no. Next week is the tomato growing competition. I have got to beat Zaha Hadi. Or you could find a real hobby, Professor. 